going to grow. It's going to get greater. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So let's worship God tonight with joy. Let's yes. worship God tonight with exuberant joy. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing here tonight. Yes. All that you're going to do. Yes. All that you're going to reveal. All that you're going to do in opening our eyes and causing us to see, God, what is true and what is real and what you're doing now in this end time revival. Yes. This end time revival is everything and more that you've been waiting for. Yes. It's everything and more that you've been waiting for. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And we are so blessed to be in the end time revival. There's nothing, nothing on earth like the end time revival. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Praise God. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to True Grace Church. We're so happy you're here tonight. Amen. God is really happy you're here tonight because he's got some amazing things to share with you. He wants to move in your heart tonight. He wants to open up your spiritual eyes. And every time you come, every time you come and you hear the anointed word being released, you grow. And every time you grow, you become larger on the inside to carry more glory you carry more joy you will carry more peace spiritual ears spiritual eyes will be open and you will be able to understand the plan of God Amen. when you can understand the plan of God then you're at peace Amen. when you can understand the plan of God you can get in step with him Amen. when you understand the plan of God it's because you're already obedient you're already in His will. See, you don't have to worry about being in God's will when your heart is set on obedience. When your heart is set on obedience to God, you will always be in His will. And when you're in His will, you're staying close to Him. You're in intimacy with Him. When you're in intimacy with Him, you can hear the secrets of His heart. He will reveal mysteries to those who are close. He's not shouting it to the far away ones. The far away ones, he's saying, come to me and get saved. But when you come, then you need to stay close. And you need to hear this prophetic words that's going out in the earth now. Yes, Lord. Unlike other words that have gone out in the past. This is going out now in our lifetime. In our lifetime. And you might say, well, wait a minute. That sounds too good to be true. Oh, it is too good, but not too good to be true. It's just good. It's because it's God's plan and purpose. So welcome here. My name is Pastor Heather, and I co-pastor with my husband, Apostle Larry, in the back there. Amen. And we're so glad you're here watching online. If you're watching live or watching the replay, we welcome you. And God says his anointing will come right through the screen to you as well tonight. Amen. As well as those who are here and have come out. The anointing is an actual location. It's a location. It's poured into vessels who will carry the oil. Amen. Who will carry the mantle. Who will want to share the glory of God for others. Not for their own glory. Come on. But for others to partake. Amen. For others to come. Amen. Others to receive. To grow strong in the Lord. And in what he's doing in this end time revival. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So tonight, I want to talk to you about... Having eyes to see the end time revival. Mm. Mm. Not just anybody's going to see it. Mm. Just like not just anybody saw Jesus as the Son of God. Even though he stood in their presence, they didn't see him as the Son of God. Most all of them that he's talked to and spent time with. They didn't see him as the Son of God. You think, well, I would recognize God, would you? What if he looked like something you didn't think he was supposed to look like? Ooh. What if he spoke of, taught of things that you were not aware of and you thought you had it all down? 
And you thought you knew God, and you knew God's ways, and you knew God's plan, and you knew you knew the Bible, and you you'd been born into this, or maybe three, four generations. And you said, "Well, I know, I know about God. I know the Bible. I know, I know what it is to be a Christian." And then Jesus stands in front of you and says, "Hi." And you say, "Hi." Hi. Who are you? You don't recognize me. Mm. No. Mm. no. Do I know you? Wow. Oh. Ooh. Oh, come on. Mm. Not yet. You don't know me. Mm. So, this end time revival that God has poured out in the earth is for those who want to have eyes to see. Yes. It's not for those who say, I already see, I already know that. I got it. Right. It's not for them. Yes, come on. It's not for them. It's for those who want to see, Amen. who are willing to see, and willing to see something different than what they'd seen before. Mm, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to take you to a scripture. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. It's in Matthew. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 12. We're going to read down a little ways. Pay attention to what God is saying. To his disciples, because he's speaking that to us tonight. Amen. In Matthew 13, in the Passion Translation, verse 10, it says, Then Jesus' then Jesus' disciples approached him and asked, Why do you always speak to people in those hard-to-understand parables? Mm. He explained, You've been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom. But they have not. For everyone who listens with an open ear or an open heart, everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart, even the understanding that they think they have, will be taken from them. Keep going. Verse 13 through 15. That's why I teach the people using parables because they think they're looking for truth. Yet because their hearts are unteachable, they never discover it. Although they will listen to me, they never fully perceive the message I speak. The prophecy of Isaiah describes them perfectly. Although they listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand a thing that I say. They look and pretend to see, but the eyes of their hearts are closed. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their ears are plugged and hard of hearing. And they have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, they would open their eyes to see and open their hearts to hear and open their minds to understand. Then they would turn to me and I would instantly heal them. Wow. Verse 16. But blissful and happy are your eyes. Yes. For they see. Yes. Delighted are your ears. For they are open to hear all these things. Many prophets and godly people yearned to see these days of miracles that you've been favored to see. Amen. Yes. They would have given everything wow. to hear the revelation you've been favored to hear. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. This end time revival is the heart of God being released in the earth now. Yes. Wow. It's not just being a Christian. It's not just being a follower of Jesus and going to church. It's reviving the original plan that God had for the church. Yes. Wow. That's good. We have gotten, by and large, we've gotten very far away from the original plan. Yes, ma'am. Of the master builder who drew the blueprints in heaven long before he ever created mankind. 
God knew exactly what he was going to do, exactly when he was going to do it, exactly how it was to be done, and to whom it was going to be transferred to. God created every human being to carry his kingdom inside of them, to carry the anointing, to carry the power, and to live free from the tyranny of the devil. Come on. Yes. Every human being was created in the likeness and the image of God to carry the anointing. How many do you see fulfilling that desire of God right now? Not many so far. Because this revelation was supposed to come through the fivefold ministry. It was supposed to come through when the church was birthed, basically on the day of Pentecost is when the church was birthed. Right. Which was 4,000 years after Adam was created. So the church was birthed on the fourth day. Wow. Okay. Wow. And the instructions for this blueprint were given to the apostles who had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Amen. 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 A little under 1,500 days they walked with Jesus and they were supposed to release this blueprint and this plan. How it was to be carried out. How it was to be demonstrated. How it was to be taught. How people were going to be taught to go from being in the kingdom of darkness and having their understanding in the spirit realm that was darkened be completely enlightened like newborn babies coming out of a dark womb. Woo! Wow. You see, the apostles and the prophets and the fivefold ministers came a little bit after the original apostles. There was time. Originally, there was just apostles. And they were to help these newborns come into this revelation. Come on. And the apostles were teaching true and pure doctrine. And as they were teaching the doctrine that Jesus had taught them, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and special abilities from God to do this job that they were given to do because it was an amazing job. It wasn't just for that time period. It would be for the very all of human all of humanity until Jesus came back. Come on. So they were sticking with the original blueprint and the original plan. This wasn't the fourth or fifth printing. This was the original. And as they were teaching, there was miracles, signs, and wonders in their ministry, exactly as it was in Jesus' ministry. Yes, man. Yes, man. The Holy awe of God fell on every believer. Many people, thousands of people came to Jesus in the first weeks, months, and even the first years of the birth of the church. Because everything was right on time. Everything was exactly how it was supposed to go. People were being convinced by signs and wonders, healings, Demons coming out was a common thing. Yes. Right. So people could be set free and their eyes could be opened. Yes. And so there were thousands upon thousands of people coming into the church and believing in Jesus and then being raised in the right way. Amen. Right. There was not a bunch of offshoot churches and denominations. Mm -hmm. There was the apostles. And then out of the apostles... God called some of them to also be prophets. Come on. And God even called some of their children to be prophets. Yes. Amen. And, and God began to raise up evangelists. That was a term never heard of before. That was someone who would go out. And be like a herald and an evangel who would who would tell people about Jesus, work miracles, and bring them to the apostles. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Come on. You have to understand the only anointing on the entire planet was right there in Jerusalem. That was the hub mm -hmm. in the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says, 
once once Jerusalem is established, you need to go out into Samaria, Judea, into the utter most farthest places of the earth. Yes. And they need to know. They need to hear. And so then there became to be pastors. And pastors were anointed and appointed by the apostles. So the apostles had to see somebody for a long time Come on. in a track record of being faithful, Amen. being steady, not going, I want to be a pastor, I want to be a pastor. No. <laughs> he didn't even know what that was. <laughs> Basically, that was going to be person, a person who was going to oversee a church in a particular region. Amen. And they were going to be under the leadership of an apostle and a prophet. Amen. Come on. Because God always starts with the anointing on the head. Always. And then it pours all the way down. Hallelujah. That's in Psalm 133. Come on. Oil is poured on the head. Ooh. Jesus is the head of the church, the anointed one. The oil was poured on him and it's now passed down to apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers who are called to be the equippers of the saints. Amen. Say it. The nurturers, the trainers. Come on. And each one has a very particular and precise role in the life of a believer. Amen. And a believer cannot be equipped without a fivefold ministry. All right. That's right. Amen. That's right. All right. Amen. 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 And sitting and planted under an apostle Amen. and a prophet. Amen. Now you might say, but. I don't, I don't know of any apostles and prophets. Well, God's raising them up in this end time revival. He's revealing who he has released this impartation of anointing to. Because truly the apostle is the highest and the prophet are the highest in levels of position in the church. And they see others and as God speaks and prophesies and says, that one is called for this role. That one has this gift. And they know the voice of God. And they're very serious about their calling. Then they know who to anoint. And they know who to, who, who to, who to raise up. Because they'll see the heart of that person. And how they serve. In the menial things that seem to be menial. But ministry is ministry is ministry is ministry. Right. Amen. You may never become a five-fold minister and have a microphone and, and lead other people. But your ministry in the body of Christ Amen. is very vital and important. Amen. And your faithfulness to God Amen. will shine through in all that you do. Just like your unfaithfulness will show through Amen. in all that you do. Yes. It would be better for you not to be put in a higher position when you are not faithful than to be placed in a position of higher level and be unfaithful and have been able to hide it for a while. And then when people are trusting you, you drop the ball, you fall, and then many fall with you. So that's why the apostles raised up people who they had seen in their life were faithful. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share with you tonight who is going to be raised up in this revival. Those who have the eyes to see and value the revival. Like if you just came to hear Peter preach a couple times and then you went to your house and you went back to your old church quote synagogue or you went your own way and you're like well I heard Peter a couple times yeah he's you know I saw him cast out a few demons and heal a few sick but you know I'm, I, I got my life to live I got a lot of other things going on in my life and I can't keep going to this you know new church thing that they have but then there were those that were hungry and thirsty Hungry. And had hearts that said, this is everything I've ever longed for. How yes. could I go anywhere else? Yes. Right. Where else could we go? You alone, Jesus, have the words of eternal life. 
Amen. So Jesus is speaking to us tonight. He's speaking to us about how do we have eyes to see this end time revival when as we know we just read some people listened but they didn't understand a word he said and they didn't, they couldn't even apply it. They couldn't even walk it out in their own life. They weren't like I'm banging on every word he's saying. They might have said it but their hearts weren't getting anything. Wow. So let's look at some of the characteristics of those who have eyes to see the revival and maybe some that don't. Amen? So number one, you must listen with an open heart. Everything in this kingdom has to do with heart, not intellect. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you graduated with five doctorates in divinity. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a heart for Jesus and for his people, you don't qualify. Right. You don't qualify to be part of the end time revival. Ooh. But if you have a heart for Jesus and you're willing to let him shape and mold your heart into something beautiful and usable, and you're open, you will be used. Mm -hmm. If you come in filled with what we call his old wine, old religion. You won't be able to receive anything new. Because right. you already know it all. Oh. But I never met a know-it-all who knew it all. <laughs> right. 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 And the Bible says pride comes before destruction. Yeah. And a haughty know-it-all spirit comes right before a fall. Right. Woo. <laughs> the Bible says God hates a proud look. If you're looking with pride and saying that's too simple of a message, I, don't, I can't receive that. I mean, I've been I taught that 12 years ago. No, you didn't. That's right. The devil's lying to you. Oh, I've been believing the end time revival since the 70s. Maybe you've been praying for it, but you haven't seen it until now. Right. So you must listen with an open heart. What's an open heart? It's a humble heart. It's a teachable heart. It's a trainable heart. Luke eleven thirty four, Passion Translation. The eyes of your spirit. Mm, your spirit has eyes? Yes. The eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. What if your spirit's darkened and you're not born again and you have no revelation light can come in? Dark, black, can't see anything. Pitch black. But if you're born again and you're listening to the spirit and you want to hear everything that the spirit is saying and everything that the spirit is saying through your fivefold minister, then your spirit is listening. Oh. And your spirit's eyes are open saying, look, behold. Behold. Revelation light comes into your being. Hallelujah. And when your heart is open, the light floods in. Hallelujah. But when your heart is hard, stony, mm -hmm. it's closed. Mm -hmm. The light cannot penetrate. And darkness takes its place. Mm -hmm. Do you understand there's no neutral with Jesus? Either you believe or you don't. Right. 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 Either you're, you're growing in the kingdom you're not. Or you're growing in the kingdom of darkness. Yes, ma'am. Right. When the revelation of this new wine and this end time revival is put out on social media platforms. Yes. And people see what God is doing. That's what first grabs them, right? Yes. yes. That's what grabs you, right? Is yes. what you see what God is doing. Yes. yes. And then you hear. Wait a minute. I want to, what what's being said along with that? Mm -hmm. Right. What, 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 what is the teaching that's coming forth through that? Mm. When I went down to Five F Church, Five Fold Church in Los Angeles. In May of 2021, I had already been a pastor with my husband since 2011, 2011. I've been pastoring. 
Prior to that, I'd gone to Bible college, four years of Bible college. Mm -hmm. yeah. President of the Bible college. Mm -hmm. Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> I had taught and facilitated in Bible college. Wow. Wow. I had mentored over 200 women in restoration groups. I was on a, always on prayer teams in church. I, I, I served on Thursdays at our, our women's gathering every Thursday morning. There was a couple hundred women who came. There was a church of 17,000. There was over 200 women who came every Thursday. I was a table leader, and then I was a coach of the table leaders. Wow. I was, I was always called to serve. I was worship, praise. But I didn't know that I was filled with old wine. Wow. But if you'd asked me, because I was just Heather back then and not pastor, you'd have said, Heather, can you cast out a demon? I probably would have said, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you believe in healing? I do. Do you minister healing to people? Huh. Sometimes. Okay. Do you believe in miracles? Oh yes, I do believe God can do miracles. Can God work miracles through you? Through me? Well no, like he just like he he did it in the Bible and he does it through I don't know, maybe people have the gift of miracles. You know that's a scripture. It is. I knew the Bible really well. Yeah. That's what I knew. I knew what the Bible said. But I didn't understand a lot of what I was reading. So when I was seeing COVID take over all the churches in the land and churches in, in every country, it seemed like. Yeah. People were shut down. I've never had seen a church shut down in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Over the flu. <laughs> That's right. Never saw it in my life. Never dreamed it could happen here, but here it goes. Yeah. <coughs> People were shutting down left and right. Churches were closed all over this little town in Redlands. Closed all over the state. People wouldn't come to church because they were afraid to get sick. Right. Or they were afraid to get fined. Right. <laughs> we weren't afraid. Right. Amen. <laughs> Well, God, if somebody gets sick, we're going to pray for them in here. Yeah. We haven't even seen a lot of healing. We said, we're going to pray for you. Amen. So we stayed open and the AA club stayed open. The <laughs> NA and the AA club stayed open. And we, we stayed open. And then the liquor store across the street stayed open. But every other church in town was shut down as tight as you could shut down. <laughs> there was also some benefits for churches that shut down, just so you know. Yeah. 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 You got some money from the government if you close your doors. You might even get more money than the tithes and offerings of the people that came. You could upgrade your sound system and even go on a vacation if you could find a place where you could go during that time. I know pastors who bragged to us personally and said, yeah, I got X thousands and thousands of dollars and I upgraded the entire sound system in the church. We did this, we did that, I invested it. And I says, oh, he goes, what did you guys do with your money? I said, we didn't close our doors. Hallelujah. We don't need government cheese in this house. I'm not a hireling. <laughs> That's the way it is. You come in, many, and people did come in, and they were surprised. But many of our church members left. Many of our church members didn't have the faith to stay. Mike and Marlo back there, they stay. Crystal stay. <laughs> Mike and Marlo even opened up their home and said, hey, come on over for worship night. Let's really get into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but I was so distraught with that situation. The powerlessness in my life. Mm -hmm. The fact that I had studied so many revivals and so many amazing, powerful ministers of God, but I couldn't do any of it. Mm -hmm. I never read a book about one of the great heroes of the faith, and then at the end they said, and now, whoever is reading this book, I'm going, to, I'm going to release the impartation of the anointing to you. <laughs> you no, know, it just ended with their life. And I'm like, wow, I wish I could have been them. Mm 
Right. I wish I could have been this one in this tent revival. I wish I could have been this one who had raised 23 people from the dead, documented. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could have been at that 1904 revival that everybody had to call the fire department because the livery stable looked like it was on fire. But it really wasn't. It was just a fire of the Holy Ghost. I wish I could have been there. Man, I wish I could have been there when the miracles happened and people got healed and kid, little kids threw away crutches. Yes. And blind people could see. Amen. And dead people were raised. Amen. I've never seen that, Lord. But I'd sure like to. Oh, but I, maybe I was born at the wrong time. No, no. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of in a in a kind of a dumpy state at that point. I mean, I, I was down in the dumps, to be honest with you. There was a handful of people left at church. And so I came across this. Somebody shared with me that I don't even know. Shared with me. Apostle Catherine Crick. Hallelujah. And demons coming out of people in the park where she was ministering because they wouldn't let her rent a building in Los Angeles. I'm like, demons coming out. Oh, I'd seen a few little bit of that back in the 80s, you know, and the 90s. I'm like, okay, I don't know about this, but let me just watch. Let me just watch something. I'm here at home. I might as well watch something. So as I'm watching and I'm I'm seeing demons come out of people like that, like that, like that, like easy, 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 easy. One, two, three, out, out, go, leave, leave her, leave him. So, well, that's not fake. And so I started watching more and more and more and more and more. And so what really grabbed me was the deliverance and then the healing. And then the people, like, I've never seen, like, demons throw people on the ground and that. I mean, that was like, are you serious? Whoa. And she's just, like, cool as a cucumber. Like, okay, well, you got to go. you got to leave. No, I'm walking in my authority. Out. And then the person would go, thank you, Jesus. And I'd be like, they really got free. Amen. Yes. And then I began to listen to what she was releasing. I said, oh, she's talking about the anointing. She must be one of those special ones. Well, you know what? I'm going to go down and see one of those special ones. Yeah. At least I could just be in the crowd, right? I could just be in the crowd and watch. So I went down to Los Angeles after we had our church on Sunday. I drove down there to L.A. And I was outside at this park going, okay, well, there's a little keyboard. And there's a little cajon. And there's a, a couple music stands and, and microphones. All right. I guess we're going to have church in the park. I kind of like this. There's people milling around. You know, it's L.A. It's busy, you know, people walking their dogs and all kinds of things, people having picnics and whatever. And 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 she she begins to sing and it was just so sweet. It was just so pure. And I said, Oh, look at her. She like thirty years old up there. Out there standing standing in the sun, preaching, singing beautiful worship songs to the Lord with her other worship leader there and the guy playing the cajon. And so then I just I listened to her message. It was about 45 minutes, maybe maybe 50 minutes, an hour long, an hour. And I just thought, wow, she's just sharing such beautiful words of grace. And it touched my heart. I was so happy I was there. And she says, and now it's time for ministry. <laughs> I says, oh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was kind of like a, here she was down here, and we were kind of up on la- layers, you know, of, of semen and grass. Yes. And so I just saw people come. Oof. They had this little cement circle that you were kind of supposed to not cross that barrier. So at least she had like a little area, right, to minister to people. And I saw people from all different backgrounds go. Yeah. All young. Okay? All different ethnicities. All different backgrounds. Mm. Go up there and stand. And she began to say, God's going to release his anointing right now. I release this power of God to you now. Mm. If you have anything that you'd like to renounce, I want you to renounce it now. Mm. That you no longer want this in your life. And she began to call out anger, fear, anxiety. And I saw people starting to shake. I'm like, whoa, that was quick. That was so fast. And I knew that they weren't faking. Yeah. This was not pretend. This was real. Yes. And she wasn't even like moved by it. I'm like, well, she must be used to this. Oh. Like every week, like once a year. But this is like every week. <laughs> and sure enough, she'd call somebody, come, you come, 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 come. And the person would be flopping around. Yeah. Sometimes cussing at her. 
Sometimes yelling, sometimes screaming, sometimes head down, sometimes crazy up. I mean, I saw people literally, you can't do this because we tried it as kids, to roll your eyes so far back in your head that all you can see is the whites. Like, you still got to see part of the iris, right? right. No, these people's eyes were completely rolled back in their head. I'm like, that has got to be a demon. And so I was probably looking like some looking loo, and here I am, a pastor. I go, I got to go down close. I got to get close to this. You know, you're it, you're seeing the most miraculous thing. You want to get right up on it, right? So there was a little backstage there, back area. You know, it was just open, and I got back there and I started watching people's faces. She had buckets out. I thought, what? Are, oh, the buckets. Well, the buckets are for the vomit. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. It's all about people are rolling in their vomit. All right, we're sitting up. And then there's blankets because people are going down in the power of the Holy Spirit. And up goes the blouse and up goes the dress or whatever. Nice and, oh, you're covering them up. You know, that was like the side stuff. But to see, like, what really happens when a demon comes out of a person? Amen. And then I saw demons talking back to her through the people in crazy voices. And I'm like, this is real. These people had this in them. These are normal, average, everyday people walking around. These are people who wanted to come to church in the park. Yeah. These were not like the, the like we're gonna go to the asylum and pull them all out. These were just normal looking people. <laughs> it was amazing to me. Yes. And then I just cried. Oh, yeah. I cried and I cried because people were getting free. And it was happening in public. It was happening in a park. And this woman was just so calm and cool. She was she was just peaceful. She was full of grace and she was full of authority. Although she probably didn't weigh more than 120 pounds. I mean, like, whoa, but she was full of authority. She could have been 12 feet tall, you know? And I was like, wow. I watched and I was so excited. I came home. I told Apostle Larry, I said, oh my gosh, you better come and see this. This is amazing. And so that was week one. Week two. Week three, I showed up. I showed up with somebody who needed deliverance really badly. Her mother had asked me, would you please take my daughter? Yes. And another woman from our church went. And so the ministry time came. And here we go down to the front. I, I kind of pushed her up there. I said, go. She was manifesting a little bit. I said, you go, you go. And she goes, you come with me. I'm like, oh, okay, because I don't like to be in front. Whether you think that I'm up here and this is like so easy for me, I really don't like to be in front, do I? No. No. And so I went up with her and I presented her before Apostle Catherine and I said she needs deliverance and Apostle Catherine ministered to her and she did receive some. She was she needed more layers, but she received some. And the Lord says, Now how? there was cameras. There was live phones going on me. I don't know. Camera, people right there looking at you and you know, normally I just kinda like Forget that, but I, I just did. I stepped up yeah. and I said, I'm a pastor and I need this anointing. I need this anointing. Would you impart this to me? Because two days earlier, I tried to cast a demon out of someone here at the church during a, a gathering on a Friday night in the back room there. I tried to cast a demon out. And she began to manifest and she went down on the ground and she just was holding her throat. She couldn't talk. Amen. It was Marlo in the back. Look at her. And she couldn't speak. And this wasn't just like, well, I'm going to pray for you, God bless Marlo, you know, bless her marriage, bless her kids. And no, 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 no. She could not breathe even. I could see like veins in her neck. She was like, Oh, I'm going to be able to do something about this. This is not, I'm not calling 911 because this is not a medical emergency. This is a spiritual emergency. And so I began to pray. Other people in the room began to pray. And it began, began to kind of like get a little out of control. Like, you come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. I was like, well, I'm, in Jesus' name, you must come out. Well, the demon wasn't responding to my authority. And I realized I don't have rank on this thing. I don't have rank on this thing. Like, you know when you got rank and you know when you don't. Yeah. Yeah. And it was two hours later. Wow. Still on the floor. Oh. Mm. I didn't want her to see me cry, but I was crying. Oh. So the only thing I need to do is just begin to sing over her. Just sing for peace. Just peace. Yeah. 
and she she breathed a little bit better and she drove home and I knew no demon came out that night but she trusted me as a pastor to be able to do it and I couldn't so when I showed up on Sunday Come on. at 5 at church I was serious yes. even Apostle Catherine goes you were so serious when you came I said I sure was <laughs> because look at if I'm a fireman and I'm supposed to be putting out fires and I don't have any water I got a hose but I got no water I am useless I'm just a spectator watching somebody's house burn down if I can cast out demons and minister healing and walk in the authority of God then what am I I'm just a puppet and I pretend I'm a wannabe get out of the ministry Go drive an Uber or something, but you're not qualified to do this. These are people's lives and their souls. You need to be spiritually equipped. And that was this was on me. So I, I walked up there and I says, I would like you to release this anointing to me. And I, I told her, I says, I don't see you as any less than me. Kind of a dumb statement because I didn't even understand what an apostle was, but but I'm looking at a lady who's you know, she's younger than my kids. She's half my age. But I said, I, I want you to release this to me, if you would. I don't know where all the other pastors are. Uh -huh. I was thinking, why wouldn't everybody just like be, yeah. all the pastors would be filling this part. Amen. Amen. Yes. But they didn't recognize the apostle. Wow. wow. And the only way I recognized it was by the miracle signs and wonders. I still didn't understand the teaching yet. I hadn't even gotten to that part yet. Wow. I just knew. I need this. Mm -hmm. So she spoke up some prophetic words over me. She says, I see your words like fire yeah. yes. coming out there very sharp and they're going to break down mm -hmm. religious walls and barriers. Mm -hmm. She says, you have a very rare heart. Mm -hmm. Heart is very pure and very rare and no one had ever told me that. In fact, in churches I was usually told the opposite. Mm -hmm. So I received the impartation. She put her hand on me. Although you don't have to have her hand put on you, but she did put her hand on me. I went back in the power of the Holy Spirit and I received it. And then it was put to the test three days later right here in this church. Amen. And the same woman, not the one that I took down for deliverance, but the other woman that traveled with me, that same woman was here in our church and I'd known her for seven to eight years was crying and wanted prayer at the end of service. Mm -hmm. And her friend brought her up and said, she wants prayer. And I said, what do you want prayer for? And number one was she had confusion. And number two was she's had thoughts of suicide. And I didn't know any of these things about my friend because that's not what you talk about when you go out for coffee. Mm -hmm. Did you know I'm confused when I think about killing myself all the time? Mm -hmm. You don't say that to somebody who can't do anything about it. Right. You might tell your therapist or your counselor, but you don't tell somebody who can't do anything about it. So she had never told me, but now she did. And so I said, would you like to renounce that? And she said, yes, and she renounced. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I detach you from that confusion, and I command that spirit to leave you. And I did it all by faith. I wasn't feeling tingling. I wasn't seeing angels. I wasn't seeing Jesus giving me a thumb up. Thumbs up, you know, nothing. It was all by faith. There was no vision I was getting because God was teaching me, you're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Wow. Heather, you're going to have to do this. And so when I spoke that, <coughs> she began coughing, coughing, coughing. And nobody knew what to do. They thought, oh, she's, she's, she needs a throat lozenge or something. No, 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 no. Our people had never seen that. There was only 12 here anyway. And, and so she, she began to cough. She went down on the ground. And I said a couple more times, come out, come out of her. She went down, she stopped coughing, she looked up, she says, it's cool. She was so happy. Yeah. Who's like, go? Oh, that was so easy. Didn't have to hit her in the head with the Bible, none of that stuff. No big wooden cross, you know, nothing. <laughs> and so then she, she, she said, but there's more. I said, there's more. Well, what is it? She says, it's the suicide. Because we just deal with the confusion. Mm. It's the suicidal thoughts. I said, okay, well, would you like to renounce ever wanting to kill yourself? Mm. Yes. She began to renounce and she began to walk backwards from me. 
not like to me, like you're not be coming to me. She's walking backwards, and as she's walking backwards, all of a sudden this voice comes out and says, I own her! And I went, that's not my friend's voice. It's on now. Right. It's on. <laughs> okay. And I look over to the seat where usually my husband is, and he wasn't there that night. He was at home. He wasn't feeling well, so I'm like, I don't have I don't have natural backup. Because he would back me up. I, I need spiritual backup. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, No. Mm -hmm. No. You received the impartation of the anointing on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You now need to walk in it. And I said, Can I do this? He said, We'll do it together. Woo! Yeah. I said, Okay. Oh. Wow. So that was in a split second. Nobody knew what was going on in my mind, in my heart, talking to God. Yeah. And and that demon's looking at me, and her eyes changed to look like a like a goat's eyes. Mm -hmm. This woman has beautiful blue eyes, but her eyes look like a goat's eyes, mm -hmm. like a snake. They're straight up and down. It's not like a round pupil, a human being. And I looked and I went, okay. Oh. And then I got I got this righteous anger in me, and I said, You don't own anybody. I'm not talking to the woman. I'm talking to the demon. Yes. You need to understand. You don't see the demon, but you talk to the demon. The demon just talked to you. Mm -hmm. right. And you don't sit there and have a conversation and find out, when did you come in? What's your name? How many of you? I'm not going to have a conversation with a liar because he's not going to tell me the truth That's anyway. Right. Right. That's so right. I said, you don't own anybody. I said, you need to come out of her. And then the coughing began. And then she fell down on the ground. And then a lot, a lot more, like rolling around a little bit. And I said, all of you must leave her now. Amen. This I've only been watching Apostle Catherine for three and a half weeks. Ooh. Uh, ooh, beautiful. But God had given me the impartation, and I walked in it the best that I knew how. And I've grown since then. Yes. But that demon came out, and she was set free right there. And when she looked up, she says, it is God. And she was shocked because she heard that demon speak through her. But it had authority over her. And it was gone now. Amen. And that was the first night she said she ever slept with that horrible dreams, horrible conversations and thoughts going on in her head. And she did not ever want to kill herself again. Amen. Glory to God! So that was my intro to 5F Church. And I could have just said, well, okay, now I've got the anointing and cast out demons. I'm good to go. But the Lord says, uh, 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 uh. But wait, there's so much more. And I started listening to the teaching. New wine. Well, I've got new wine. I'm a Christian. And I'm a grace preacher. Lord says, you don't have the new wine. What do you mean I don't have the new wine? You don't, you don't have this new wine. Wow. Uh, yes, I do. Heather. No, you don't. You don't. You have what you have, but it's not what... I want to give you. Mm. There's a lot of old still that's lingering down in there. Mm. It's like, you ever try to clean out your garage? You've been living in the house for 10, 12 years. You look at the garage, you're like, how much old stuff do I have? Right. What is going on here? When did all this accumulate? <laughs> you're going, what was, and so the Lord goes, we got to clean stuff out. we got to get things out so I can get things in. Because you can't just preach grace and all the old stuff that you've been preaching and cast out demons. This is new wine. Amen. This is yeah. the revival of the end time. And it's not just the power of God to heal and to cast out demons. That's part of it. Mm. But it's the authority. It's the anointing. It's the chain of command. It's the restoration of the fivefold. Heather, you don't even know what it is to be a pastor yet. Mm. But I've been... Heather. Mm. Yes, Lord. Okay. Mm. But when your heart is open, the light floods in, and your heart is hard and closed, the light can't penetrate into a dark place. I had to go down, and I have been doing this for over three and a half years, and I will do it the rest of my life. Listen to the Apostle Catherine teach me about the new life. And as she teaches me, old is leaving, and new is coming, and old is leaving, and new is coming. And I have the most wonderful teacher who's so patient with me. She's so patient. Because I was kind of like those Jews that came along and followed Jesus. Oh, we know about the law. He goes, well, I'm not teaching that anymore. What? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not doing that. We're doing kingdom now. Mm. Kingdom. Come on. But I, I was really good at the law. Mm. I know. You were a good law. You were a little, little law person, weren't you? <laughs> but it's called the ministry of death, and I'm the life. So you better follow the life. Like this too. Hallelujah. Now the end time revival.
revival will not look like the old time revivals. Come on. Just give me that old time religion. Yeah. Give me that. Do you know that song? Get it out of your repertoire. You know that's that do you know you know that song? That's an old song. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for the Hebrew children, and it's good enough for me. No! says that's never what I wanted. Can we get the air on a little bit higher? It feels very hot in here. And the Lord says, I want to do the original plan. And you guys have never seen the original plan. It will look like the kingdom of God come to earth. Oh no, that's when Jesus comes back. I already know about that rapture and I'm pre-trib. Right, God? He goes, no, no. We're not talking about that now. We're talking about the kingdom coming to earth. Well, what Wait a minute. What do you mean the kingdom coming here? Like the plan of salvation? That's part of it. That's intro. But then you're going to walk in the kingdom Amen. on the earth. Yes. Well, what does that look like? He goes, we'll stick around. Um, Let's go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Come on. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go back and read the book of Acts. Yes, Lord. Stop trying to do stuff in Greek and Hebrew right now. Uh, back to the book of Acts and the Gospels. That's what your ministry is supposed to look like. I can teach you about healing, but I can't heal. I can teach you about demons being coming out, but I can't. No, I need to be able to do it. Yes. I need to understand you want. I need to understand fivefold. I need to understand anointing. I need to understand the chain of command. I need to understand how the whole kingdom works. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. So now look. Matthew 6.10. Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. They said, could you teach us how to pray? Because you're praying. You go and pray. Your prayers get answered. He says, yeah, here's part of it. God, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on. When's the kingdom supposed to be happening? Now? Yeah. On earth now? So what does the kingdom look like? People sitting in church? No. No. no it's okay. it's a revival carriers, kings and kings and queens, yes. and priests and, and the chosen ones carrying the anointing wherever yes. they go. Yes. Looking like little Jesus wherever they go. Yes. Looking like the apostles wherever they go. Looking like the church of Acts wherever yes. they go. Yes. Yes. Overcoming the enemy every single step. Yes. Dancing on his head every day. Yes. Carrying the joy. Carrying the power. Carrying the, the, the peace of God. Woo, woo. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 28, But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out the demons, oh, he's talking to Pharisees now. Yeah, right. We figured it out. You're casting demons out by the power of Satan by Beelzebub. Jesus that. is like, you guys, <laughs> he didn't call them dumb, but he sure could have. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Satan figured this out. He knows this. If his kingdom's, if kingdom's divided, he can't stand. Right. I'm not casting demons out by the power of Satan, but if I'm casting them out by the Spirit of God, then you know the kingdom of God has come upon you before you even expected it. The revival is here before we expected it. I don't know when we expected it, but we don't have to pray for it anymore. It's here now. Yeah. It will be poured out. Yes. It will be poured out as you come. As you want the anointing. Yes. Don't just come and get the anointing and run out the door and say, I got it. I don't need no. any more. No. 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 The anointing is for you to stay in this end time revival. Because yes. God truly just wants one church on the planet. Yes. yes. It's Finally. not going to look like the old. It's come not going to look like the old. If you, if you like the old better than the new, then no. you will be fizzling out quickly. Oh, Love okay. you. <laughs> Number three. In order to see the end time revival, we must receive it with a childlike heart. Right. Well, I don't like to be called a child, Pastor Heather. Well, that's what God calls you. <laughs> <laughs> Luke 18, 17. Learn this well. Unless you receive the revelation. Jesus is speaking. Unless you receive the revelation of the kingdom. The same way a little child receives it, you'll never be able to enter in. Hmm. Church 
children, little children, are like sponges. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're, 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 those ages, they're so impressionable. They say that's the easiest time to teach a child a foreign language. Yes. It's the easiest time to teach a child even to play a musical instrument. Yep. Because they're just soaking everything in. They trust. They're pure. They take it in. They believe it. Okay. If you say that's true, then that's true. Yes. I believe that. But the older they get, the more potential for being critical, cynical, getting into your intellect. And when you get into the intellect, this will block your spirit from receiving the truth of God like a child. Amen. Oh, you can get a lot of biblical knowledge, but no real spiritual eyes being opened. Amen. That's why it says a little child will lead them. Amen. Out of the mouths of babes and infants has God ordained strength and praise. Wow. Children aren't trying to impress anybody. Yeah, come on. That's right. Children don't know who's the one who's the one driving the nicest car. They don't care. Right. <laughs> they don't care. Children don't know who's got the biggest, fattest wallet. They don't they don't know who's got the highest degree. They don't know who's the theologian. They don't know any of that. They actually respond to the one that's the kindest. Mark 10, 15, Jesus says, Please listen to the truth that I speak. Whoever does not open their arms to receive God's kingdom like a teachable child will never enter. When you open your arms wide to receive this end time revival, you say, this is all I want. This is all I need. This is everything I've ever longed for and so much more. God, I, the half of it wasn't told me of how good it would be. This is all I want. This is all I need. I don't want any of that old stuff. None of that. I just want the new. I just want the new. Keep flooding my mind with revelation light. Keep flooding me with revelation light. My spirit eyes are open. My spirit eyes are open. I, I, shared, I shared today with somebody. He said, you know, keep listening to the messages. Keep listening to Apostle Catherine. Keep listening to the messages. Don't listen to 42 in a day. Listen to the one. Say, Lord, trust God enough to lead you to the one you're supposed to listen right. to. Listen to it. Right. You say, but I, I only received like 3% understanding. 97% you didn't understand it. That's okay. Right. Rejoice in the 3%. That's right. Right. Yeah, right. Take that 3% and apply it. Right. Take that 3%, sow it into your heart, and let it begin to multiply. And listen again. Ooh. Next time you listen, you say, wow, I think I got 10% of that. Oh. I got 10%. 90% I can't talk about, but the 10, <laughs> whoa. It's like here tonight, I'm talking to all of you, I'm talking to people online. Yes. You're each getting a different amount. Yes. yes. So 30, 60, and 100. Some are getting 5%. <laughs> Rejoice in the 5. Don't feel dumb. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you. Take the 5 and treasure it. Yes. Treasure it. Take that 5 and go, you know what? I'm going to hold on to this 5. I'm not going to let it let it go. And I'm going to sow it into my own heart. I'm going to talk to Jesus about it. Yes. And then I'm going to listen to that message again. The same one. Same one. Well, you're on your fifth time. Okay. You're probably up to 50% now. Amen. Because there's so much old that needs to leave and new that needs to come in. But every time you listen, you get happier. Yeah. Every time you listen, there's more joy. Every time you listen, you expand. Yeah. Every time you listen, there's more peace. Every time you listen, there's more of your eyesight being coming open, more light coming into you. And when you can see things in the spirit, you are happy. Yeah. You are joyful. I'm not talking about seeing demons or seeing angels. I'm talking about seeing with the revelation of God. God's understanding. Yes. Yes. Amen. So come as a child. Receive this end time revival as a child. It's the only way. And then number four. How will this end time revival come? It will come to those who cherish it and realize the value of it. Jesus said in Matthew 21, verse 42, 43, he says, Jesus asked them, 
Have you never read in the scriptures the very stone which the builders rejected? That's the religious leaders. Come on. They reject it and throw away has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone is the most important stone in the entire foundation. Right. It's a perfect cube. Yes. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Remember that scripture he says? I tell you, for this reason, religious leaders, Pharisees, skeptics, scoffers, criticizers, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce the fruits of it. The kingdom of God is not stones. The kingdom of God is fruit. It's alive. Yes. Wow, say that. The kingdom of God is within you. Yes. Yes. The kingdom of God is within you. That's right. Yes. Amen. Come on. The reign of Jesus Christ, where he reigns, and who he sets up as kings to reign with him, is a realm of the spirit that you can actually see manifest in the natural by fruits. Yes. Yes. You can't grow fruit from a stone. No. The law never produced fruit. No, never. Except guilt, condemnation, and shame. Right. But you see, this kingdom is alive. Yes. This kingdom is, is filled with children of God. This kingdom is filled with all of us come in as new believers, truly. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved. I'm 45 years this December. Doesn't matter. You, you could be saved four months. You can be saved four days and you just come into the kingdom. You're like, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Yes. You're planted. You're, in, you're already in the ground. You're already going to receive good water. You're going to receive the sun. You're going to receive the nutrients in the same soil that we're planted in. Yes. See, the soil of this end time revival is good. Oh, God. Yes. Hallelujah. It's good. It's not toxic. It's not polluted. It's not mixed with sand and gravel and all kinds of yucky stuff that things can't grow in. It's rich. Yes. It's based on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets in the original blueprint. So it's not truly a new thing. It's a revival of what was originally planned. Hallelujah. Because when people say, you're in a cult, you're teaching a new thing. I'm absolutely not teaching a new thing. Amen. It's a new revelation. Yes. Come on. Yes. But it was revealed through Jesus, Amen. to his apostles, to his followers, to the Acts Church. Come on. Yes. It was revealed to them. And they operated in it. And then it was revealed even in a greater way to Apostle Paul. Amen. Amen. You know, the Apostle Paul actually enlightened all the other apostles. Yes. yes. Yeah. And he never physically walked with Jesus. Wow. Wow. Right. Peter could have actually sat at the feet of Paul and learned from him. All right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Paul came a little bit different season after Peter. Peter was Peter was doing what he was supposed to do. He was transferring from Jesus into Pentecost and in the birth of the church. And then Paul came a little bit later. They lived at the same time, overlapped a little bit. But then Paul came a little bit later and God gave Paul the details of the blueprint. Beautiful. Amen. But this will come to those who cherish it and realize the value of it. There are people that come to the came, came to this church. They came for a little bit and they said, eh, I, I don't have need of this ministry anymore. I'm going to move on. And so they moved on. I don't know where they are. I don't keep in touch with them. I don't check up on them. But they didn't value what was being poured into them here. And those of you who have stayed, you value. Yes. You cherish it. And it becomes more precious. It becomes more valuable. Because you realize, I am growing. I'm changing. I'm being transformed in this anointing and in this end time revival. This is why I'm here because if the old couldn't change me, it could just rearrange the furniture, but it was still an old, the same old house. Right. But everything's new and upgraded now. Woo. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is my last slide. The end time revival will completely transform Christianity. Get ready. 
Alleluia. It will completely transform Christianity as you know it and as I know it. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. All those heroes of the faith yeah. that I read about, that mm. I have their books, mm. <laughs> who are in heaven now, most of them. Yeah. Look at this time and say, oh, I wish I could have lived there. Amen. I wish I could live now. It will completely transform Christianity as we have known it because it will transform each and every person who believes. No one, do you hear me? This is prophetic. No one will look the same. You stay in this revival, you stay in this anointing. No one will look the same, believe the same, think the same, speak the same, or live the same as you did. Pre, uh, pre end time revival, pre anointing, pre exposure to what God has brought through Apostle Catherine Craig. Amen. Amen. She's the Apostle Paul of the day. Amen. That's just the way it is. I recognize it. People don't recognize it. It doesn't matter if you don't recognize it. They crucified Jesus. The Lord of glory, they didn't recognize him. All right. But see, I know where my impartation came from, and I know where my revelation comes from, and I know where I'm planted, and I'm not leaving. Amen. Amen. So now, each one who receives the vessels that God has chosen to bring the kingdom here at this time. This is a line in the sand right here. I'm going to go back and start that sentence again. Okay. Each one who receives the vessels that God has chosen to bring the kingdom here at this time will be overflowing with more and more revelation, more understanding, more joy, more peace. And I'm going to add more authority and more power. Like I look at Apostle Catherine. You can't you couldn't look at your pastor like that. Right. Yep. If your pastor is old wine, you can't look at your pastor like that. Because right. your pastor couldn't transform you. Right. Your pastor could preach and it made her a man or woman of God. But they could not release the impartation. Right. I was in church after church, nobody released the impartation to me. They didn't have it to release. Right. But I'm wondering where did they get theirs or do they have it? Do they want it? Do you want it, ministers? Yes. Do you want it? Come to 5M Church. Come and receive it in Jesus' name. Come on. Timothy was never ashamed of Paul. Never. Timothy was a spiritual son of Paul. Yes. He says, I learned everything I learned from my spiritual father. I'm so happy. I was trained under the best. In fact, I didn't even want to leave him. He told me, you got to stay in Ephesus. No, can I go with you? <laughs> oh, you got to stay here, son. So I'm definitely proud and not ashamed of my spiritual mother, Apostle Catherine Gray. And because my life is changed, I'm now able to preach the gospel with power and authority. And I'm anointing. I'm able to now understand so much more. And I'm still growing. So this is what God's entrusted me with right now. Amen. Right here, right now, and anybody who online, but those planet. These are the ones. These are, it's you. It's you. It's you. God entrusted me with you in your heart, in your life, in your spiritual growth. And so I take this very seriously. I take this very, very joyfully. This is like the most important reason why I'm here on the planet. Yes, I love being a wife. I love being a mother. I love being a grandmother. But the most important calling I could ever have is this right here. Because out of this flows the issues of life. Everything flows out from here. So recognize who the vessels are that carry the anointing. Stay close to them. Treat, don't treat them as common. No. Don't treat them as, well, I can go down to 5F whenever I want. I'll watch it online. I don't need to be there. I got to clean my house. You can clean your house on Tuesday night and you know it. <laughs> you can get that in. You know, when you're excited about cleaning the house, right? Say it. 
You can't miss out. You're called. God has a book written about your life. And it's a really good book. It's a great story. It's a story of overcoming so many trials and so many afflictions, disease and sickness and demons, overcoming trauma in your life, overcoming rejection, overcoming generational curses and things that had latched onto you before you ever came out of the womb. Your story is good, but it's got to be where you got planted in the anointing and then you begin to flourish and then you begin to grow and then you begin to produce fruit for the glory of God and for the kingdom so you can look just like Jesus. So look at Matthew 13, 12, my last scripture. Jesus says, for everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation the progressive until he or she has more than enough but those who don't listen with an open teachable heart even the understanding that they think they have will be taken from them I said there's no neutral either you're growing in the anointing or you're dying. No. No. It's like a tree. A tree is either growing or it's dying. Yeah. What causes trees to die? Usually they get infested. They get a disease. They get a sickness. And there's not somebody there to take care of it or cure it. Don't let the doors of the enemy of skepticism of this end time revival come into you. Don't listen to people that don't believe what God is doing. If any of the apostles listened to their skeptical family members, they would have never followed Jesus after the cross and the empty tomb. They would have gone back home to fishing. They would have walked away like many did. And you'd never read about them. They had to press through. They had to walk through criticism, persecution. Some of them kicked out of family. Some of them kicked out of synagogue. Some of them kicked out. Some of them, even their, their wives left. It's even said that for Paul... To be a Pharisee, you had to be married. We never read anything about his wife, but he did write, if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. The brother or sister is not under bondage in such a case. Right. So Paul could have actually had a wife. He went on with Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. So good. What, what will you give in exchange for the anointing? Nothing. Everything. What would a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing. Nothing. You see, this end time revival, there's a place for you at the table. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's a place of honor. It's a place of healing. It's a place where you get to testify. And if you're not at the table, nobody's going to hear your testimony. Nobody's going to hear how God delivered you and how God saved you and how God healed you and how God changed your life. They'll just be an empty seat. So right now, Say, I've planted in this end time revival. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. I'm going to flow. I'm going to flow. I'm going to walk in authority. I'm going to walk in authority. And power. And power. Over the enemy. Over the enemy. I'm not backing down. I'm not backing down. I'm not caving in. I'm not caving in. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm rising up. I'm taking my place. I'm taking my place. Jesus died to give it to me. Jesus died to give it to me. The Holy Spirit inside of me. The Holy Spirit inside of me. Is yearning for me to take my place. He's yearning for me to take my place. I'm coming into this revival. I'm coming into this revival. I'm in this revival. I'm in this revival. And I'm staying in Jesus' name. And I'm staying in Jesus' name. And I'm going to receive everything. And I'm going to receive everything that God has for me. That God has for me. Amen. Those of you who have said that and declared it from your heart, you just make God smile. You just make God smile and you made the devil mad. Amen. <laughs> the devil will try to come against an anointed child of God. Right. But God already knew he was coming because the devil has no tricks up his sleeve that God doesn't already know about. Right. This is your time. 
This is the greatest opportunity of your life. This is greater than having the winning lottery ticket, Powerball, whatever that is. This is greater than anything yet could be offered to you now and in eternity. Because the Lord says, choose this day whom you serve. Choose today. Today is your day of choice. And I speak over everyone who did declare that right now. That more anointing is coming to you as you release those words. Those words were the words of an open heart. And an open heart receives more revelation. And I declare that even as you spoke that, from this moment forward, you will understand more. You will understand more when you hear these messages. You'll understand more when you walk, watch the replay. You'll understand more when you hear Apostle Catherine. You will grow as this anointing is poured into you and on you and through you and to you. And you'll be a vessel that's wide open. You, your mouth will be wide open to receive. And all old wine in you will dissipate. God will root out all the old religion. God will root out all that old intellectual carnal Christianity that had no power to it. That was just, just talk but no walk. God will root it out of you. All tradition, all religion, all things that have a form of godliness but no power. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. And I speak protection over every one of your hearts right now. That anyone and any enemy who would come to try to snatch this beautiful seed and this anointing and this calling out of your heart and out of your life would be struck down by the power of Almighty God. For His angels have been given charge over you to keep you in all of your ways, the ways that you do in obedience to God. Watch over you and to keep you. Those angels will bear you up in their hands, even if you dash your foot against a stone. The enemy may throw something to try to trip you up. You're going to leap over it. The angels will lift you up over it. You won't fall into a pit and you won't stumble over a stone anymore. In Jesus' name, I declare that you will grow and you will grow strong and you will last long. And the fruit of the Spirit will grow in you stronger and stronger, more beautiful, more abundant, sweeter as the days go by. I speak over you now that your identity is known in heaven. And it's time for you to know your identity here on earth. You're not John Doe or Jane Doe. You're not Susie Smith or, or Johnny Miller. You're child of the living God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life for a reason. So you can make your father proud. That you believed him. And you believed what he said to you. Without having to see it, you believed it, and then it came to pass. Yes. Yes, Lord. And I declare each and every one of you are able to share your testimony. Your testimony is not too small. Your testimony is not too long. Your testimony is not dry and boring. You will share your testimony. Your testimony will bring people into the kingdom when they hear of the wonderful works of Jesus. I speak supernatural wisdom into you as well to know to stay close to your anointed leaders. To not wander off into other teachings, other novel doctrines, traditional teachings of men that have no power. I speak over all of you to have a childlike heart. Children don't want to go far from their mom. They don't want to lose sight of their mom. Children want to be with their mom. Children want to be with their dad. And I declare that you will have such a hunger and a thirst to be near your spiritual leaders. So they can sow into you so you don't get pulled away by some spiritual kidnapper who wants to harm you and hurt you. And there's plenty of them out there. 
but that you will stay close and you'll stay seen. And you'll feel the protection around you all the time. And the Lord will keep you. He'll make his face to shine upon you. As you walk in this revelation, God will be gracious to you. He'll lift up his countenance and his glory upon you. And his peace will become your peace. And his joy will become your joy. And his victory will become your victory in every situation, in every circumstance. Every minute of every day, you shall walk in victory. Yes, Lord. For it's victory that God gives to you. His victory becomes your victory. I declare this now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to have you sit just for a moment, amen, before we go to ministry. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to sow seed into the work of God. In this new wine, bringing your offering, bringing your tithe, bringing your seed. Bringing your life is all a form of worship of God. It's not something you do out of obligation. It's not something you do because you're told to, you have to do this. You have to do this or you'll be cursed. <coughs> Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's right. And he says those who, those who come and understand my heart. Understand that freely you have received, so freely you give. This is a corporate endeavor. Amen. This is not one billionaire funding the entire church. Come on. Say it. It's God distributing increments of wealth to billions of people in the planet and saying whatever increment you have received your paycheck or or whatever that comes through your business your paycheck is right now your increment don't be ashamed of it don't be ashamed if you say but my paycheck's too small the Lord says it's your increment right now be faithful with a little don't complain that you have a little but be faithful with a little and rejoice because seeds always turn into giant trees. Groves of trees. Remember a giant mighty oak tree started from one acorn. That's right. There's one acorn. 30, 40, 50 years later it's a giant oak tree. You can tie a swing in it. And have a little kid play in it. So the Lord says everything started in my kingdom as seeds. Everything started in those 12 and in the 120 in the upper room. Yes. And they gave their whole life. They gave everything. Yes. And then the Lord says, those who give everything, He says, can never outgive me. Because I'll give you more than everything. Yes. I'll give you more than your everything. Yes. Right. See, your whole life is worship to God. When you go to work, it's worshiping God. You know that. Working a secular job doesn't mean, well, oh, I'm not as spiritual as somebody who works at the church. Or, no. If God's called you to go to work in a job, go work at that job and do it as unto the Lord. It's an act of worship. Amen? Amen. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Yeah. So even in your giving, your giving is for your benefit. Yes, the church benefits because now we can preach the gospel, we can proclaim the gospel, and we have the funds to do the things that we need to do. Amen. But truly, when you put seeds in the ground, you get the harvest coming back to you. That's right. Yes. So if you want to sow into the work of the ministry here, there's envelopes on your chairs. And if you're
you're watching online and you'd like to sew, you can go to our website, truegracechurch.com. God is multiplying your seeds. Did you bring that? God is multiplying them. I can attest to that. Over and over and over and over and over in my life. And you know, one of the things is, it, we don't give with greed. There was kind of a little twist in the old, part of the old line that I was training in. And it was, it was kind of a name it and claim it. So it was the weirdest little sneaky thing that came in there. There was like a greed in the giving. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting this because I want that back. Ooh. I want this back. Ooh. Oh, if I get, if I get a thousand, I'd, I'd probably get twenty thousand. Right. And there was a greediness in it. Instead of going, no, no, I'm giving because I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving yeah. because I love God. I'm giving because He's so wonderful. I'm, yeah. I'm giving, and I'm not made to give. A giant chunk. I'm just going to give. Yeah. But I want to give in my heart. Yeah. And what I want to give in my heart is always generous. Yeah. Because my God is generous. Yeah. We have a generous Father. He's not stingy. Yeah. So I just want to share that with you. That, that In this new way, we don't give out of greed. No. That's just gross to me. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to speak over you. If you're giving tonight and you have an envelope, you're going to sew in through your phone. Just hold up your envelope or your hand or your phone. And I want to speak over your seed tonight. In the name of Jesus, I declare over the seed in your hand. Think of that right now as a seed packet. (laughs) And all that you need, all the blessings that you need are going to be connected to that seed right now. And so I speak activation yes. to those seeds right now in Jesus' name. I speak spiritual activation for everything that you need in your life. Everything that you need in your life. Finances, spiritual revelation, emotional peace, relationship peace, provision, food, gas, clothing, Amen. insurance, rent, mortgage, transportation, whatever you need, clothing, blessings for others, it's in there. And I release this anointing to that seed right now so that you begin reaping this very moment right on back to you. Right on back to you now in Jesus' name. For your Father wants to give you more than you ever dreamed of. And your heart will be filled with joy and thanksgiving to God. And overflowing with testimony after testimony after testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can bring your seeds up into the basket. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to you right now. The anointing will locate your need. Whatever need you have in your life. The anointing is more than you need. The anointing is what you need. No matter what you need. The anointing is what you need. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I want to speak over you now. I want to speak over you. Is your heart? You can stand. Hallelujah. One of the keys to receiving from God what you need is to surrender. Is to surrender to Him. That means give up. Give up doing it your way. All right, now. Give up. 
giving it your best shot. Give up religion. Give up old wine. Give up the struggle of trying to do it on your own. Trying to be a self-made man or a self-made woman. Give up striving for perfection. When Jesus freely gives it to you, I think. So just surrender to God any area in your life that you've been struggling with. Any area in your life that seems to trip you up. Give up. Surrender right now. Surrender the old one. Surrender the old ways. Surrender the old mind. Maybe not every area, but in certain areas, it's like I just keep hearing the word bog. B-O-G. Like a mud bog. You've been bogged down and like you've been you're up to your knees. In mud. And you can't you can't walk. You can't move. You've been bogged down with burdens, with cares with failures financial failures relationship failures moral failures spiritual failures and yet you keep trying to walk and you can't and some of you are even just like stuck in your boots you're just stuck in the bog and the Lord says would you just let me get you out I'll get you out of it. I'll wash you. I'll cleanse you. And I'll turn you around the other way so you never have to go back to that God-forsaken place again. Ooh. All right. Thank you, Jesus. The devil will try to lure you into no man's land, into dark and dry places, into muddy bogs into dark traps where he can lure you in and then entrap you and lock you in the cage and close the door and throw away the key. Yeah. The devil will try to take you into your mind, into your emotions, get you thinking about all the bad things that happened in your past, all the hurt and the pain that happened to you. And I'm not saying it didn't happen. could very well have happened. But when the devil keeps replaying those old lies, those old videos, those old movies, he says, hey, get some popcorn and soda. Let's sit down and watch some of those old movies together. Let's relive the trauma of your childhood. Let's, let's listen to those old conversations that, 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 that were word curses spoken over you. Let's go back and, re and then let me remind you of how mean your dad was or... or, or, or how often your mom was gone and you couldn't find her, or whatever it was. How you were compared to your siblings and you never could meet up. The devil, the devil knows that if he gets you in a loop, you just stay on the loop. Without the anointing, you can't get out. Even if you try. If you can get a degree and get a really good paying job, you can get married and think that, you know, you married the, the, the most beautiful spouse on the planet. You can come to church all the time, but you can still be in a loop. But the anointing will locate your need. Right. And if you want out of that loop, God hears the faintest cry. You know that. He hears the cry of your heart. And if the cry of your heart is delivered, you I don't care what it looks like. Just deliver me from this. Yep. 
He's on it. He's on it just like that. And there's no shame and there's no condemnation. That's right. And he doesn't say, how did you get into this mess? Because he knows everything. He knows the beginning from the end. He says, let me deliver you up out of that horrible pit and out of the miry clay. Let me set your feet upon a rock and establish your steps. The scripture says this poor man, this poor woman cried to the Lord and the Lord heard and delivered me out of all of my trouble. He delivered me from my enemy who was too strong for me. He delivered from my kept me from my captor who had me locked behind three sets of four sets of bars. God delivered me. See, right now the Lord's ready to deliver you wherever you're at. But he says, Show me your real face. Show me your real face. You don't have to wear a mask. Please don't wear a mask. And I want my children wearing masks when they come to me. I want my children face to face so I can lift up my countenance to them. Yes. Can't put my countenance on a mask. If you wear your mask in front of God, then the only thing that you think He loves is your mask. Take it off. Wow. That's right. Don't be. Don't try to be pretentious. That's right. Doesn't matter how long you've been here at True Grace Church. If there's still something deep in there that you know you've been hiding or the devil has wanted you to hide it's not you it's the enemy Come on. just renounce it right now right. It, it may be something you say it's so dastardly I can't even say it say it Amen. break the back of the blackmailer because right. if the devil can blackmail you with something he will Right. I'll tell everybody. No, I'll tell everybody. I'll tell God. Hello. 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 Don't not worry. Hello. 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 You got it. Thank you, Jesus. Right God. I just speak over every single one of you now. I detach you from all that you have renounced before the Lord right now. All that you have said you want to be free from. I detach you from all of that muddy bog, that miry clay. I detach you right now from every demonic spirit that's been haunting you and hunting you. I detach you right now from all dark secrets that the enemy has tried to blackmail you. I detach you right now from shame condemnation. Some of you even say, well, I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Right now, renounce. Say, I renounce blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I commend every spirit attached to those things that you have just surrendered to God to lead you now on the count of three. Every spirit haunting and hunting you must go now. One, two, three. Out. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Complete and total freedom coming to God's children right now. Complete and total freedom coming to you now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some of you say it feels like the demons have been like a boomerang, like you cast them out, Pastor, but they just come right back. There's ways to maintain your freedom and to receive complete deliverance and complete freedom. And if you need that information, it's a, there's a, actually a long teaching about it. Several teachings. We can help you with that. Apostle Catherine has put out the most beautiful, thorough, complete teachings on how to maintain your freedom and how to receive complete freedom. So it's not the boomerang effect. Well, there I go out and then I get in my car go back home and here they're back on me now. I'm screaming at people at my house again. I feel rage. 
I want to go use drugs again. I'm going to go tie one on. No. 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 You feel like the bad dreams come back. You feel like the demons are haunting you again. And now they, they've tripled and quadrupled. No. This is not your portion in Christ. Not in this anointing. They don't, they don't get to come back. Because we're going to equip you and train you. Right. So that you know how to fight them yourself. Yes. And you keep coming and you'll get stronger. Yep. And you'll get freer. And there may be layers. It's okay. okay. There will be layers of deliverance. Yep. It's okay. Amen. We want you completely free. Amen. That's your portion in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here who wants to come and receive right now? Thank you, Jesus. Anyone who wants to receive deliverance, complete deliverance and freedom. Hi. You just come right here. Hi. What was it that you're wanting freedom from, sir? Thank you. How long has that been? How long? About a month. A month? Yeah. Did, did, did anything trigger that? Um, just like jobs that I was going through with, like security jobs. And um, it's just things that I was going through with them. And it just made me feel like I was like, not myself anymore. In Jesus' name. I detach you from those hallucinations, from those negative, dark thoughts. And I speak to every demonic spirit that has tried to lay hold of him, has been speaking into his mind, has been putting bad thoughts into him. I take authority over you now in Jesus' name, and I declare that all of you must go at the count of three. One, two, three. Out of him now. I break off of you every generational curse. I break the power of those generational curses and every demonic spirit that has latched itself onto you through the bloodline in the family. I break the power of all witchcraft that's been done over you, that's been done in this family, that's been spoken over you. I break the power of all spells and potions and words that have been spoken over you, in front of you, or by you of any and every form of witchcraft. And I come in every demonic spirit that came through those open doors to leave in Jesus' name. Out you go. Every spirit that came through the jobs that you have been having, through the things that you've seen, things that you've encountered, Violent acts that you've seen. Violent acts that have been done to you. Things that you had to do in your job that opened up doors for these attacks to come into your mind. I commend every spirit attached to those to leave now in Jesus' name. You must go out of him completely. Every spirit of shame and guilt, condemnation and failure, I detach you from those things. And I command every one of those spirits to leave now in Jesus' name. Out! anger and of rage. I break your power over him. 
all the violence that he experienced as a child. Words that were spoken over him. Words that were spoken to him by family members and by bullying. I break its power over him now in Jesus' name. And I command every one of those spirits that have tried to lodge in his soul to go out now in Jesus' name. Leave him. Now. All of you must go. And every spirit that speaks against your identity is a beloved child of God. Every demonic spirit that tries to degrade you in your thoughts. Every spirit that says you're not even noticed. Nobody even notices you. You're not of any value. Those are lying spirits. Those are not your thoughts. Those are the lies of the enemy. And I command every one of those spirits to go out now in Jesus' name. Leave him. People in your life, your, your, your employers and in relationships, people did not value you as precious. <laughs> they didn't value you. They didn't give you the value that God gives you. And your heart's been broken on more than one occasion. And the Lord says, I value you, son. You're more important to me than you can imagine. And I just declare from this moment forward that you will never be in a relationship with anybody again who will not value you and treat you for the good heart that you have. Because God says you have a very good heart. And He actually says in your heart you're very tender. Mom, he has a very tender heart, doesn't he? I see him even as a boy with a very tender heart. And he became hard over the years. Like a callus. So it became, so you can protect your heart. But the Lord says, I'm going to protect your heart for now. I will protect your heart, son. Amen. I want you to be that tender-hearted man. I need more tender-hearted men in this world. Amen. Men who have my heart. Amen. Men who are not hardened by the lies of the enemy. Amen. The men who take authority over the lies of the enemy. God's restoring your tender heart right now. The layers of the hardness, the rejection that you've experienced in relationships. I speak all that hurt and pain to go down in Jesus' name. I speak all that hurt and that pain and that rejection to go now in Jesus' name. And all the hardness that developed over the years to go now in Jesus' name. It's just dissolved in the presence of this anointing and in the presence of the Father's love. Hallelujah. This is deliverance right now. This is deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just release this anointing to you now. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit into you now. I release the power of God into you now. I release joy and peace to you now. And I declare that your star will be restored. Your star, you will shine bright. All of the gifts and the qualities that God has put in you will be restored. I speak now, you're going to be at peace. No more thoughts against anything, against God, against yourself. No more haunting thoughts and no more hallucinations. I speak peace to you now in Jesus' name. Just receive this. I receive this new heart. The heart that God gave you as a child. God says, I will protect your hearts.
setting you free right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just coming up here. You are very bold woman in the Lord. You're very bold in the Lord. And the Lord wants to use you so mightily. In the name of Jesus, I detach you from everything you just ran out. Completely detach you from it all. And I speak to every spirit of addiction. Every spirit of drug addiction, every spirit of alcohol addiction, every root of rejection, all the pain and the sorrow that you too have endured, all the trauma that has come to you, I completely detach you from all of it. I speak to every spirit that has tried to lay a hold of you, that has been in you, that has been working in her, I now speak to you and I declare you all must leave her now at the count of three. One, two, three. Out now. Out of her now. Every spirit that came through generational curses, addictions in the past, in the family members, addictions in the bloodline, I break its power over you now in Jesus' name and I command those spirits attached to leave now, the familiar spirits, out now in Jesus' name. You must go. Every spirit that's been working in your life to bring heartbreak and causing you to go to run to these substances to try to medicate so, so you don't feel the pain in Jesus' name, I command every one of those spirits that came in through trauma, betrayal, and abandonment to go now in Jesus' name out. Every spirit of orphan, I command to leave you now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that says you're alone and no one loves you and no one cares for you, I break the power of that spirit and I command it to leave now in Jesus' name. You must go out of her now. You must leave. All of you that have taken up residency in her must go now. Every spirit that says it owns her, you must go out now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Every spirit that has felt at home inside of her, you must go now in Jesus' name. You have no authority and no power now. I break your power over her. Out. Hallelujah. 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 I speak complete and total freedom to you now in Jesus' name. Freedom from those thoughts. Freedom from those negative thoughts. Freedom from hopelessness. Every spirit of hopelessness out of her now. And every spirit of condemnation. You must leave now in Jesus' name. Out. Out of her now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I release this anointing to you now in Jesus' name. I release the peace and the joy of the Lord. I declare that you are restored. You are restored to the joy of your salvation. I declare that you will no longer need any of those substances. You will not even crave them. That you're set free even in your physical body. You're set free in your mind. You're set free. The demonic spirits are gone. And you are free now in Jesus' name. You
you're free to be that woman of God that you've always longed to be and that you are and that God says about you. Be free now. You have victory now in Jesus' name. This anointing is more than you need. It's more than enough. And God's filling you with peace right now. He will hold you tonight. He'll put you to sleep tonight. He'll give you good dreams. And he'll do it every single night and every single day. This is your portion in Christ. Detach you from every spirit of fear of driving. 
I renounce the fear of driving. Amen. I renounce every. I renounce double mindedness. There you go. I renounce it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I renounce that my heart gets numb on how I handle situations. I know I get numb. God forgive me. Hallelujah. But I renounce the numbness. I renounce feeling insecure. Mm-hmm. And I renounce that the issues that I'm going through, God, Amen. that you're going to get me through because it's hard. Amen. <laughs> and I renounce everything that isn't of you, God. And I, re- and I just thank you, God, for a fresh, a refreshing. Hallelujah. God, I need a refreshing. Hallelujah. I speak over you now to be detached from everything that you renounced. And I speak to every spirit that's been lying to you, mocking you, and making you a captive to fear. I command every spirit of fear, insecurity, confusion, double-mindedness to go now in the name of Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Out. All of you out now. Out of her. Fear must go in Jesus' name. I detach you now from every generational curse that you have been carrying demonic spirits in you from generations past. I break the power of all of those spirits and I command them to leave now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that says you're not able, you're not capable, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not a good enough Christian. I break the power of those lies of the enemy and I command them to leave now. Every spirit of the accuser of the brethren in your mind, every spirit accusing you to yourself in your mind, Think, making you think that other people don't like you and other people don't want you around and that you're not loved and that you're not precious and that you're not cherished. I commit every one of those spirits speaking to her those words out now. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. spirit that brings emotional waves to you. Waves of emotion that go high and then low. High and then low. That's been toying with your emotions and messing with your mind. I break its power over you now and I command them to leave. Every spirit of depression, out! fresh tonight. Receive fresh joy. Receive fresh peace. Receive fresh fire. Receive boldness now. Receive courage right now. Receive strength in this anointing. That you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Receive your new identity. Receive who you are in Jesus and what you can do in Jesus. Receive God's love now. In Jesus' name. Amen. us from yes. the demonic spirits, yep. the lies of the Lies. enemy, condemnation, shame and guilt, right. false belief, right. insecurity, inferiority, telling us that we can't do things that God has given us the power to do in the anointing. That's right. yeah. No, there's going to come a time when the Christians will have no fear of anything. Yeah. 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 Now. That's right. That's her portion 
right now? Amen. How many of you still have some little bit of fear trying to loom around your life? Trying to creep around, okay? In Jesus' name, I detach you from all that fear. And I speak to every spirit of fear that tries to come into your life now. And has come into your life. That limits you on what you can do and what you can't do. That limits you on, on being free in what you think, what you do, how you speak. That limits you. I commend every spirit of fear out of every person in this room now. On the count of three. One, two, three. Out. Out now. All fear must go. All fear must go out now. Every spirit of fear, every kind of fear, every kind of thing that holds you back must go now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. This is your portion. This is your portion. The spirit of fear must go. God did not give this spirit to you. Thank you, Jesus. She's being set free right now from all spirits of fear. Amen. Amen. Be free from those spirits of fear right now in Jesus' name. Be, fear, be, be, be free now from every spirit that's been lying to you, making you afraid to, to reach out and do things that you were called to do, to be the person that God called you to be, to believe that you are so valuable and you are worth so much to God. And that you are needed and necessary in this family. You are needed and necessary in the kingdom. And that all your gifts need to come out and nothing can hold you back. Nothing can regulate the speed of your growth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Old fears. Fears from family. Fears from generations. Fear from failures. That they'll just keep being repeated. No, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fears from some of you have fear to go to sleep and some of you have fear to wake up. I command every spirit of that causes you to be afraid to go to sleep and, uh, and dream out now. Spirits of fear that come to you the minute you open your eyes, even before you open your eyes in the morning, trying to make you afraid to face the day. Go now, in Jesus' name. Fears of leaving your house. Fears of driving. Fears of driving at night. Fears that you're going to get sick and die early. Hallelujah. Out now every one of those spirits must leave. Thank you, Jesus. Fear of speaking up for Jesus. Fear of being bold. Fear of believing God. There's even a spirit of fear that hinders you from believing God to come through for you. In every situation that He loves you. He's pouring into you more than you need. Every spirit of fear that hinders you from trusting God, I declare, must leave now. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Fears of walking in your calling. Fears of cause you to not be courageous and bold. Fears that prevent you from having good and healthy, godly relationships. Fears of being yourself, your true self. Some of you have fears of being loved. It's a demonic spirit. I declare every spirit that's been operating in your life that makes you afraid to be loved to go now in Jesus' name. Out. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but one of power, one of love, and of a sound mind. That's the spirit you got. The Holy Spirit has power and love and a sound mind. A well mind, a whole mind, a healed mind, a peaceful mind, a joyful mind. An undistracted, undisturbed mind. A mind that is not frustrated. A mind that's not annoyed. A mind that is not hearing 4,000 voices at one time. A mind that is settled, stable. 
peaceful, joyful, wise, anointed. I release to you now the mind of Christ. I release power where there was fear. I release strength where there was weakness. I release boldness where there was shyness and intrepidation and intimidation. I release hope where there was hopelessness. I release love where there was a fear to be loved. I release God's love to you now like a waterfall. Not a little one, a big one. A waterfall that will knock you down. A waterfall that will come rushing over you and take you, take you right into the throne room. God's love right now. Saturate. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Complete freedom. This anointing is more powerful than we know. I don't even know how powerful it is. I know it's powerful, but I haven't I have not really seen the fullness of the anointing strength yet, but it's coming. We're going to be seeing it. We're going to be seeing it. We're going to be experiencing it. We're going to be encountering it. We're going to be carrying it. We're going to be carrying it. And we're going to be manifesting the presence of the anointing in so much demonstration. All right. I just speak over everyone here tonight. And all of you are revival carriers. And you're not afraid to be called that. You're not afraid. You're not ashamed of the end time revival. You're not ashamed of the vessels of God. You're not ashamed of the anointing. You're not ashamed to be planted where the anointing is. You're not afraid to be named as one of those believers who believes in the end time revival and carries the new wine. And I declare that your spiritual authority increases tonight. Authority over the thoughts that try to come to your mind. You say, no, I reject that. That's not my thought. Yes, yes, yes. Authority over the lies that the enemy has spoken over you. I declare that you have more authority now in your words, in your heart, and you believe. I say what Jesus says. I get the same result. Get behind me, Satan. Yes. I submit to God. I resist the devil. He must flee. Because I carry the anointing and I have authority over my own thoughts. I have authority over my heart. I have authority over my body and over what I'm going to do and what I'm going to say. And I give that authority to Jesus and he controls me. And he walks and works through me. I release more peace to you tonight. Perfect peace. That really surpasses understanding. Yeah. Don't try to understand the peace that you have. Just, just have it. Just have it. Just walk in it. Manifest it. Let the peace of God reign and rule in your heart as an umpire. It says in Colossians, let the peace of God be an umpire. An umpire calls strikes, balls, outs, safe home run. Let the let the Holy Spirit and the peace of God call the shots. Yes. God will keep you in that place of perfect peace. Yes. As long as your mind is stayed upon Him. I'm going to meditate on Jesus. I'm not going to let those other negative thoughts come in. Some of you are going to have to block people on the phone. You're going to have to block their number. You're going to have to not take their texts or not take their calls. And some of you are just going to have to block demonic spirits. Hallelujah. You can't my thoughts are in line Amen. my words are in line my yes. actions are in line yes. I walk in obedience to God I'm filled with joy I'm filled with peace now yes. I have no need of anything else no other no other loves no other substances no other faults promises I take God's real promises I meditate on them day and night. I go to bed thinking about Jesus and thanking Him. And I wake up in the morning saying, Good morning, Lord. Thank you for another day. Yes. Help me all day long. I just draw from you. And you might want to go back and listen to this message again. You might want to hear it over again. And you'll get more than you got tonight. You'll get more than you got tonight. And, and, and I want to encourage you, go and listen to Apostle Catherine. She was on live at 6 p.m. Yeah. Go listen to her. Let your playlist be holy. Yeah. Ah, amen. Let your playlist be worship.
worship and praise and beautiful preaching and teaching. Let your heart meditate on that. I guarantee you, you will be you'll be so flourishing in your life. You'll bear fruit every single day of God's goodness and faithfulness. So be at peace tonight as you go home. Be at peace tonight. Receive God's joy tonight. Receive His love. Receive His truth about you. Receive His identity that He's given to you. And receive even a fresh anointing as you lay your head on your pillow tonight. No bad dreams for anybody. They know. Everybody's going to sleep sweetly and peacefully. God put angels over all of your houses, your apartments, your cars, your vehicles. When you get up in the morning and you leave the house, you go to job or you just get up and working around the house. Protection, peace, and safety. Amen. May you hear the sounds of heaven being sung in your heart as God sings over you and rejoices over you with singing. May you literally have your ears open to hear God singing over you. And you hear that? You hear that? That's the sweetest melody you ever Because he's singing over you all day and all night. Be free. Be at peace. Be blessed. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for ministering tonight to us. Thank you for pouring out your love and your grace. Thank you for pouring out your power and your anointing. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. Our God is so good. Our God is so great. We praise you. We praise you. Sunday at 9 a.m.